Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Once again, I'm in Germany, and the German wine is actually called the Alpiersbacher, and it's called the Kloster Whiskey. Kloster means monastery. So let's just call this the Monastery Whiskey. It is actually made in a monastery where they um, brew beer and so it's the Kloster Brau. It's actually the monastery brewery and in the year 1880 they started making beer. Now about 2012-2013 they had the idea let's start making whiskey. And so what they did first of all they sent their master distillers um, to Scotland to learn they also put them on various different seminars to learn how not just to make good beer, but to actually distill a great spirit. And they have found out that it's very, very important to have the right casks as well. And since we're in Germany, they decided to take a look at German oak. And so they went to their own cooperage in Bad Dürken, um, Dürkenheim in Germany. And there they were offered a variety of 200 different types of casks. You have the different woods, German oak, Spanish oak, French oak, American oak. I don't know. I don't think they have Japanese oak. We have Swedish oak, blah, 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 blah. You have the different types of toastings, the different types of char, the different types of sizes. All those different things matter. And so they had it choose between 200 different types of barrels and so they took a very spicy sweet barrel made from German oak which was toasted heavily and so they have a license to actually produce please listen a total of 300 liters of whiskey a year <laughs> I think that's a spillage at um, Jack Daniels every day. I don't know about you. I think uh, that's more. I think more whiskey evaporates at Jim Beam, um, Claremont, Kentucky, a day or a week than they are allowed to produce in the entire year. So now I didn't mention something very important. These two people that are the master distillers, their names are Heidi. Seferfried and Anja Feist. Two ladies. I love this. We have a monastery and they are the master distillers. So it comes off the stills at 82% ABV. They fill it up to 65% or they dilute it down to 65% and put it into their casks. At the moment, 2018, they have a total of 32 casks. Um, resting in the monastery. I think that's so cute. I was at the um, at the experience. What what type of experience is that in Louisville, Kentucky? That is. Oh, I don't even have my bottles up here at the moment. Wow, I'm having a, a one of those blackout moments. Um, that is the I forgot. And um, anyways, they have a micro distillery and they produce one barrel a day, which means they produce 300 and some barrels a year. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. It's one barrel a day. It's just a micro distillery. You come to Germany, they do 32 barrels in four years. <laughs> I just have to laugh laugh about that scale of size. All right, so um, and then they decided our first release should be after a total of five years. So this was actually um, 43%. This is batch one, and this was released in October of 2016. So I guess they actually started in 2010, and then 2011 they did their first um, distilling run, and they had about, they were like, oh, we're about 2,000 bottles more or less, and they said, oh, we know exactly what we want. We want 1,880 bottles, because that actually reflects the year of the founding of the monastery, 1880. And so there's a little bit of a secret in there, which I really, really like.
All right, this is a 0.5 liter bottle. This costs over here about 79 euros, which is running, what runs about 93, $95 for a half liter. So we're talking about $200 per liter for the liquid. Don't forget, rare and exotic whiskeys. Over here in Germany, it's still almost impossible to get something from that first batch. And as we know, when beer brewers start making whiskey, it's usually in Germany very nice. When the schnapps producers say, hey, we can also make some whiskey, it's not always the best product in the world. So what do I get on mine, first of all? If I didn't know better, I would say this is something from Japan. I get lemongrass. I get melissa. It's so unique. I've never, ever had anything like this. Um, it's a little bit like, and now I'm going in a little bit of a different direction, but it's almost in the right tangent. It's almost like Bengay. That stuff you put on your muscles when you have sore muscles that has that aroma. I don't know if it really is the uh, citrus grass. I don't know if it really is the the um, Melissa that is in there. Uh, but the German version of the Bengay, which is called the Klosterfrauen, which is the um, the the monastery for women, um, it actually has that um, aroma of Melissa. So I'm going to try it. Forty three percent, five years old German whiskey. Hmm. Mm. I would really say this is almost like a Japanese whiskey if it still wasn't a little tiny bit hot. For 43%, it still has a little bit too much of a white pepper in there. It's very gentle and very subtle, but it's very, very dominant. And on top of that, we have this, as I said, these very fine notes of citrus grass, lemongrass. Citrus would be the, the German word for here, for the lemongrass. We have a little bit of the Melissa. We have a little bit of like a Swiss type of, if you've ever had anything like a Ricola, uh, it's a little bit like that that um, cough drop that you'd have with the different herbs and the different um, flowers in there. It's very, very, very nice. It's a nice a Swiss meadow where Heidi would be running through there singing her song. Mmm, it really is nice. And this is from the Black Forest, by the way, which I forgot to mention. So apparently people down in the Black Forest know how to make good whiskey. It's a very nice smelling whiskey and it's a very, very nice tasting whiskey. Mm -hmm. Wow. I've decided only to do in my English videos the um, German whiskeys that are good. I've tried... 20 different um, German whiskeys that have not been good in the last, at least not good enough to do a video about them in the last couple of weeks. There's a German whiskey trade fair, let's just say German whiskey fair, where about 20 some different producers of German whiskey will be meeting in the wonderful city of Wuppertal, which is by Dusseldorf. <laughs> I just love speaking German names in English. It's so much fun. And I will be there and I will once again, um, this will be my second time. And it's also the second um, um, German whiskey fair. And I'll be interviewing the makers and the producers and getting to know them a little bit better. I was there last year with my son. He was my cameraman. It was the very, very first time I went to a whiskey fair and actually tried to film people, try to get to know them, get behind the scenes, get a little bit of more information. And that turned into a tr tradition for me. And I've met a lot of great people over the last year or so. And so I'm really looking forward to going back there and actually talking with those people again. All right, so this gets a B, almost a B minus, but a B in my book. A value for money is more of a C minus. Now, don't forget, it's 1,880 bottles, that's it. Batch number one. I have not seen batch number two. I was told that about 500 bottles will be coming out about once a year. And that's exactly the 300 liters of alcohol they can produce after the angel share. And so that's going to be it. This is going to be one of those rare and exclusive things that if you do not go to the monastery yourself, you might not ever see a bottle. Ah, oh, isn't it great living over here in Germany, having the chance to have such rare and exotic whiskeys. And it's worth it. It really is worth it to have some of these precious gems every once in a while.
Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany. My question of the day is, have you ever had a whiskey with a very, very nice name? Now, I mean, a nice name would be, for example, this is the Monastery's Whiskey. Kloster Whiskey in German. Um, there's a, Corsair does a lot. I love the name Rheimageddon. I love the other one, Outrage. They have some pretty cool names, to be honest. My question of the day, what is the coolest name of a whiskey you've actually seen? Which whiskeys would you consider having cool names? Now, do not say, um, I don't know, uh, Cleanlish. Uh, you can't see it, but Cleanlish is not a cool name. It's a difficult name to pronounce correctly. But there are other ones, Brook Laddie with the Laddie. Those are kind of interesting. And there's some other ones out there that are pretty creatively uh, awesome. Just write one or two down in the comments. That would help a lot. Thank you very much. My whiskey videos come out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Bye-bye. <laughs>